now that we've introduced the matching function, it's time to look at uh, the trading probabilities that are implied by the matching function. That is, the matching function is telling us that at any, during a certain period, not all sellers are able to sell their um, goods or services, not all buyers are able to buy uh, what they wish to buy, and therefore we need to figure out what is the probability that a buyer is able to buy what they want to buy, and what is the probability that a seller is able to sell what they want to sell. And these two probabilities, these two trading probabilities, the buying probabilities and the selling probability, are going to play a very important role in our models. So um, let's just reintroduce the notation that um, we had presented earlier. So we'll have a matching function. We have a matching function M. Um, and here, let's think about a discrete time model. So the number of trade in a period is going to be M is M of S and B's. Uh, S, the number of sellers. B, it's the number of buyers. And so there are two trading probabilities here that we'll try to, uh, to study. We are going to have what we denote usually F, and that's the probability to sell. And so by definition, F is equal to uh, M, the number of trades, divided by S, the number of uh, sellers. So it's the probability that any seller is able to realize a sale. So this is a probability to sell or selling probability. And then another, the other uh, side of the market, the other trading probability is what we denote usually by Q. It's a probability to buy, to be able to buy something, a buying probability. And here the definition, of course, it's the number of trades, so the number of goods that were bought divided by the number of buyers. So if you think about the labor market, for instance, F is, um, would be, you know, the, the number of hires divided by the number of unemployed. So it would be the probability to find a job. Q would be the number of hires divided by the number of vacancies. So it would be the probability to fill a vacancy. Um, and so uh, now the question is, what are the pro properties of these trading probabilities given the assumption we've made on the matching function? Um, and it turns out that the assumption we made on the matching function have clear implication for how these trading probabilities behave. So um, let's start with the selling probability. which we've denoted by F. So F we said was number of trade divided by number of sellers, but the number of trade is given by the matching function. So this is just using the definition of the matching function. And here, we're able to make some progress because we know that the matching function has um, constant returns to scale.
And by constant return to scale, we know that if we divide the entire matching function by S, it's equivalent as dividing each of the argument by S here. So we'll have M S divided by S, P divided by S. And here's the step we are able to make it because we know that we've assumed that the matching function has a constant return to scale. Okay, and so here um, you can make a two simplification, of course. So we'll have f is going to be m on one of one s divided by s and b divided by s. Okay, and so here we need to introduce a new variable that's going to be fundamental in everything we do in this course on Slack, uh, and that's the market tightness. We need to introduce it to make progress here. So the market tightness, you know, usually it's denoted by theta. And the market tightness, it's always the number of buyers divided by the number of sellers. So that's our market tightness. So if you think about the labor market, for instance, um, the labor market as an example, what is the number of buyers on the labor market? Well, it's the number of vacant jobs. What is the number of sellers of labor it's the number of unemployed workers, so the labor market tightness. The labor market is usually V over U, uh, which is a, you know, a well-known tightness, but you can define the market tightness on any market. And so in general, the market tightness is just number of buyers divided by number of sellers. So now that we've introduced our market tightness, well, we can re-express our selling probability. F, so we had said earlier that it was M of one and B over S, but B over S number of buyer over number of sellers that's just the market tightness. So now what we realize actually, and that's a key insight is that the selling probability is just a function of the market tightness and it's M of one and theta. So that's the first key result. And so what do we learn from that? Well, we learn a bunch of things. So first, of course, we learn that the selling probability only depends on tightness. Furthermore, you remember that the matching function is increasing in its two arguments. And so from that, we can see that the selling probability is actually increasing in tightness. Okay, so it means that the tighter the market the more likely you are to sell. And of course, because if you have a tighter market, it means that you have more and more buyers relative to sellers. So if you're a seller and you face more and more buyers, you're more likely to sell your goods or services. Um, so that's very natural. So basically it means that F prime of theta is positive. Um, you know, it just means the tighter the market, it means that as a seller, you're in a better and better position because you don't have much competition from the other sellers and you have a lot of potential buyers. Um, and furthermore, we can also see because we know that the matching function is uh, concave in each argument, we can also see from this that the selling probability is going to be concave uh, in tightness. which is um, 
something that we use less often, but is that sometimes is handy to know. All right, um, and then you know what the so another thing that we can see from this uh, is that the selling probability when tightness is zero is going to be zero. Um, and that's because we know that the matching function when any of, of its two arguments is zero, it's just zero. If you have no sellers, no buyers, you have no trade. Um, and so here, if you put a theta equal to zero, you see that f of theta, you know, it means that m of one and zero is going to be zero. So f of zero is zero. And that, of course, is very natural. If there are no buyers uh, or if there are infinitely many sellers, your probability of selling your good is going to be zero. So this just means that there is no chance of selling when tightness is zero, which is of course a very natural, uh, very natural result. And a last thing that's um, good to check is because here we're dealing with a selling probability. How can we make sure that that selling prob probability is always between zero and one, which is something we want? Uh, well, that's going to be uh, that's something that's going to happen because we've assumed that the matching function is always less than the minimum of its two uh, arguments. So we had remember that we had assumed that m of s and b. So num the number of matches for a given number of sellers is always less than the mean of S and B. You can never have more trades than the shortest side of the market. Okay? And so an implication of that is that if you divide the number of trades by the number of sellers, that's always going to be less than the mean of S and B divided by S. Uh, okay, and of course the mean of S and B divided by L S uh, that's always less than one. Um, and so, uh, so here we are just checking that because we made the right assumption of the matching function, uh, this object f that we are dealing with is indeed less than one, so it's indeed a probability. Okay, so we've looked at the selling probability. Now we can look at the buying probability and see what its properties are. So the bank probability we denoted uh, Q, and we said it's the number of matches divided by the number of buyers. So it's a probability that any one buyer is able to realize a match or a trade. Using the definition of the matching function is just matching function of S and B divided by B. Using one more time the assumption of constant return to scale that's going to give us m of s over b, b over b, okay? And now what do we realize? So of course, b over b, that's just going to be one, but s over b, that's just the inverse of the market tightness. You remember the market tightness is number of buyers divided by number of sellers. And here we see the market tightness pops up again in s over b. And so the same result is true as for the selling probability. The buying probability is only a function of tightness. It's Q of theta, and it's going to be M of one over theta one. Uh, and that's just because um, S over B here is just one over theta, because theta is just B over S. Um, so this is our buying probability. It's determined by the matching function and the market tightness. So um, what are its properties? We can go over the properties just in the same way as we did for the selling probability. So first thing that we just said is that the buying probability only depends on tightness. So that's why the market tightness is going to play such an important role in all our work is because it determines 
this one variable determines all the trading probabilities and therefore uh, it's going to summarize the state of the of the market and it's going to then determine everything that's going on in any market. Of course, if we have several markets, we'll have several market tightnesses. Um, second thing we said is that, uh, so here what you can see is when tightness goes up, theta goes up, one over theta is going to go down and because the matching function is increasing in both arguments, m of 1 over theta and 1 is going to go down, so the buying probability is going to go down. So here what we can see is that the buying probability is decreasing in tightness. Okay, so formally q prime of theta is negative. Um, and um, so what does that mean? It means that when you have a very tight market, um, you're, as a buyer, you're much less likely to be able to uh, uh, buy your good. And that makes sense. If the market is very tight, it means you have few sellers and a lot of buyers. And so there's a lot of competition to buy the goods. And so your probability to be able to buy is going to be low. So if we think about the labor market, a very tight market means a lot of vacant jobs, few unemployed workers. And if you have a vacancy in that situation, you know that it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be hard to get uh, a worker, it's going to be hard to hire somebody. Um, so, but that's true in any market. When you have a very tight market, we saw it was a good time to be a seller, but it's a bad time to be a buyer. Um, the probability to buy in that one period in a very tight market is low. Another thing that we can see is just taking the limit. Um, you can see that when the tightness is infinite, 1 over theta is going to be 0, and we know that the matching function of 0 and 1 is just 0. So what we can see here is that q of plus infinity is going to be 0. Um, so the probability to buy is 0. Is 0 when um, the tightness is infinite. So when the tightness is zero, the probability to sell is zero. And when the tightness is infinite, the probability to buy is zero. Um, that's because you're competing with infinitely many buyers um, to buy whatever good you want. Uh, a last important result when we are talking about these trading probabilities is how the two trading probabilities are related. And it turns out there is a very simple relationship between these two things. Um, and because we use that relationship all the time, let me just derive it here. So what is the link between um, the buying and the selling probability? So. The so selling probability f of theta, we said that it was m of 1 and theta. That's what we've just derived earlier. Now, you know that the matching function has constant returns to scale, so we can take out um, the theta. We can factor out theta. So it's theta times m of 1 over theta and 1. Uh, that's just by factoring out theta. That's, again, is because we have um, constant returns to scale. Um, but m of 1 and theta and 1, we said that was just q of theta, the buying probability. So this is just theta times q of theta. Um, and so that's really, that's a key result uh, that's good to remember. f of theta is just theta times q of theta. Um, or, you know, another way to say it is that f of theta divided by q of theta is just equal to theta. And so that's true for any, uh, you know, as long as you have a matching function with constant return to scale, these um, two things are going to be true. Um, and it's something that we'll use, uh, we'll use a lot in our work.